Good morning. Actually, it's good afternoon. <laughs> this is PJ. I'm here after the services today, um, and I am going to be preaching the sermon that I preached at both services. It is All Saints Sunday, November 7th, 2021. Today is All Saints Sunday. We celebrated at church, and then our scripture reading, our gospel reading, was the story of Lazarus. I'm not sure if I had ever heard of the day until I joined the ELCA in 1999 when I was 27 years old. The day is quiet and normally plain and simple to the outside world. Those outside of the church walls know about the other days that we celebrate, especially Christmas and Easter, but all saints sneak out into the calendar at the end of our Christian calendar year. The Christian calendar year is almost over. We are in year B and we turn to year C on November 28th with Advent 1. Before we jump into the text, I will give you an oh so brief history of all saints. The exact timing of the day is a little tough to pin down. But it occurred in the 4th century, and the date originally was on May 13th. Many believed it was set on that day to contrast the pagan celebrations that were occurring. In the 600s, there were so many Christian martyrs that the church set aside one day to recognize all of the saints. Then... Pope Gregory III moved the tradition of celebrating All Saints Day on November 1st. Every year, when he was in office from 731 to 741. Now, we as churches use the first Sunday of November to recognize and celebrate the day. Now, let us step into the text. Specifically, the gospel text and see how it ties in with All Saints and how we engage with it. The story of Lazarus is one of those stories that I do not see the same way. My view has changed over the decades. Back in the day, I saw the story as a family crisis that occurred in the town on Bethany. And Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Fred Caddick is the individual that shifted my thoughts. He was a saint who passed away on March 6, 2015. His style of preaching has influenced thousands of pastors and how they preach. The insight that he brought to me was the following. The story of Lazarus is not about a family crisis in Bethany. As much as it is about the crisis of the world caught in death and sin. It's not so much about resusciting a corpse as it is about giving life to the world. I find it enlightening to listen into words and views that maybe you are not always accustomed to listening to. Maybe your views won't change, but maybe they will. I know that my views on many issues have changed over the years. This was part of our discussion at the book club on Monday. We may not fully agree with L's conclusions, but seeing issues from a different perspective can be eye-opening. In chapter 1, our eyes were open to the story of Jesus' death. If you want to join us, we have seven more Mondays. Now that I have given an announcement within my sermon, let's jump back into the text. And let me share what else has changed for me over the years. I have always seen this chapter in John as the raising of Lazarus chapter. This comes from my original view that this story is about his raising. And many Bibles put chapter headings in and this is what they have labeled it. However, Dr. Jamie Clark Souls, who is a teaching professor at Perkins School of Theology at SMU, opened my eyes to another view. Maybe we should be seeing this text as the confessions of Martha with the help of Mary. So maybe we can look at this story through their eyes and their words. I mean, we place the focus on Lazarus 
And he does not even speak in the text. When you look at this text, I believe that our English language and the translators do injustice to it. When you look at the Greek words that are used, the wording is a little different. The difference in the words make a contrast in the words that Mary use and the body language that she is expressing. Kneeling at the feet of Jesus, which is what we see and hear in most translations, does not show the full extent of her actions. The Greek word used really paints more of a picture of her falling onto the feet of Jesus with heavy force and grasping his feet. It's not in a dignified manner that we see when the Magi kneel down beside him in the Christmas story. Then listen to their words. They both said it to him. Lord, if only. Both of them wanted Jesus to know that if only you were here, our brother would still be alive. Jesus! Why weren't you here for us? There is so much that we could do with this text and the conversations and the reaction to all the players in the story. Once again, I have had a shift on my focus. In the past, I used to lean into either the shortest passage of the Bible, Jesus wept. The confirmation students then got excited because they went, yes, I can memorize that scripture. And that is the scripture that they would use for the verse that they had to memorize to meet a confirmation requirement. Or, I focused on the emotion of anger that Jesus had and where that anger rested. However, let me share with you where I am sitting today with this passage. Here is the verse that stood out to me. Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And he came out, wrapped from head to toe, and with a kerchief over his face. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him loose. Jesus certainly had the power with him to raise him and have Lazarus come out of the tomb fully unwrapped. But that is not what happened. Lazarus stepped out completely bound. Why? Jesus calls to the community to unbind the man who had been captive by the unpleasant stench of death. Jesus started the process, but the community was enjoined to participate in the unbinding of Lazarus, and they were the ones to restore him to life. Today is All Saints Sunday. Today, we recognize the saints who have gone on before us. We have 14 saints connected to our community who have experienced physical death this past year. We have many others who have died that are deeply connected to the members of our church. Just as Mary was distraught, and rightfully so, we have been distraught. We desperately mourn the death of those close to us. However, we can hold on to a reminder that Jesus gave to Mary. The reminder is that the physical death is not the end. There will be a final resurrection for all of us. I may not have done a great job on the display in front of me, but I wanted to have a visual reminder for the 14 saints who have gone on before us. I also wanted to give you a moment to hold on to that void that you have in your heart from a loved one and light a candle. Most of us in the U.S. do not do a great job of mourning and celebrating death. If we were in Mexico, we would have the opportunity through the Day of the Dead. And if we were in Haiti, the Festival Day of the Dead. 
They use it as a time for respect, honor, and story sharing. I want to encourage you to take time today and respect and honor those saints who have gone on before us. And if you can, listen in to a story about their lives. There is so much that we can learn. As I conclude today, I want to circle back to the story of Lazarus and the words of Jesus when he said, Unbind him. The community listened in and took the clothes off of him and set him free. We are closing in on the end of the year and we'll be beginning a new year. It has been a long three years for many of you in the pews. It is my hope and my prayer that we as a community can rally around each other. From a church standpoint, there are going to be a lot of voids as we begin 2022. Maybe God is poking you to get involved in a specific area. Maybe God is whispering in your ear that you need to say no to a few things so you can say yes to another thing. Whatever the case be, may we remember that this race of life is not about individual living. It is about living in community and being here for one another. On this day, especially, may we look into the empty tomb of Jesus and see that it is empty. And through that empty tomb, we know that there is resurrection of life. Amen. Have a beautiful day. If there's anything that I can do for you, please let me know.